Welcome to Master It Monday Live. This is Maggie Carey from Master It Media sharing with you today's topic, which is going to be key components to a good Facebook ad for your local business. And we have something very exciting. Every once in a while on Master It Monday, we bring in an expert in the industry. And today we have Catherine McCahill. She is the founder of Wellversed Marketing, which is a boutique digital marketing marketing agency that is geared towards small and medium-sized businesses. Now, let me tell you something. Catherine knows her stuff. She has been a digital marketer for over 15 years and loves crafting new strategies for um for businesses to find more customers. And isn't that what we all like to see? More customers in our pipeline? Well, prior to Wellverse Marketing, um, she worked for a variety of senior and executive digital marketing roles, such as publishers like Penguin Random House, Harper Collins, St. Martin's Press, and I've got to tell you, she holds a certificate in digital marketing as well. So if you have any important questions, today is your day to ask an expert. So I'm going to pop Catherine right in so we can welcome her to Master It Monday. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Maggie. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming. So I hear that um, you can be found with a glass of uh, red wine on occasion as well always with a glass of red wine and less so when it's when we're coming into summer and then I, I do have to switch it up but love a good glass of red wine yes it, it, it's a nice end to the day so we have um today's topic is going to be about facebook ads now the last time you visited you gave us some great insight into facebook ads but today you said you're going to share something very special with us today what do we have on target for today so today we're going to go through all the ins and outs of creating an ad we're going to create it in one of the test accounts that i have and and really build that up to show you all the pieces and the things that you might want to have and, and the things you want to have ready to really create a great ad and man that's going to soar so um wonderful we'll get some of the nitty gritty look at a lot of under the hood stuff, but it'll be really fun. See, I love looking at under the hood stuff because sometimes when somebody is talking theory, it's great because you get that baseline of what you need to look out for. But then when you go to actually do it, it sometimes doesn't always look that way. And we do know that every once in a while, Facebook does change the way they do things and the way it looks, right? It's true. <laughs> yeah, Facebook has still been a hurdle for people and we're almost a year in. I, I can't even. So <laughs> we're going to get right into it on today's um, Master at Monday. Uh, Catherine, I'm going to let you lead the show. You tell me when you need things to pop up and I'll be more than happy to, to do that for you. And if you're watching now, make sure you introduce yourself to us. Uh, Catherine will be taking questions in the comments. So don't forget that this is interactive. You can leave your questions in the chat and we'll be happy to answer them for you. So we'll get into the screen in a second, but we want to start by saying that I'm going to be doing a lot of the work today in a program called Business Manager with Facebook. And Business Manager and Ads Manager are really, really specific programs that they have created to allow digital media buying have to happen on their side. So if any of you have ever boosted a post, maybe you've done a little ad here or there, um, you've seen a little bit of spend and, and you might be in Facebook business suite, but this is going to be a little more technical looking. So don't freak out. Um, and it's going to really go into the ins and outs of why the accounts are set up this way, why it matters, how that can help you and why you want to pick certain things. So let's share right. my screen and kind of get into it. Here we go. Your screen is up. I'm going to remove myself. So everybody gets to see and hear you best. Wonderful. So this is the test account that I have set up for my company, which is Wellverse Marketing. And this is an area really specific in Facebook called Facebook Ads Manager. And so this is more than just boosting posts, more than just doing that kind of thing. It, it's where we really get into some of some of the bigger things. So let's go in to create a campaign. Um, we're going to be right up here, this little green button Facebook creates called Create. And the first thing that they ask you to do really is choose an objective. And this is one of the most important things that you will do in your Facebook ads is really to make sure that you know what you're doing and why. 
I generally never pick brand awareness and reach because it's very hard to track and you're just kind of getting in front of a couple of people. Traffic ads can be great if you want to drive people to your site and they kind of know who you are, but that's for further down the road. It really just brings up your website views. There's a lot of things you can do in here around getting more views into your videos, some lead generation, people to message you. And then you also have things like conversions and conversion ads are really, really important because they allow you to find people that will actually convert into your product. And so whether this is converting to a lead or converting to purchase something, um, it, it looks for people who will, will come in, will click through and will, will actually make a decision. Not people who are just traffic people who are just kind of passers by. Um, there were brick and mortar, people would call the, I went to Best Buy, looked at a TV and then ordered it on Amazon shoppers. We wanna find the real shoppers for you and the real decision makers. So let's pop into conversions and see what happens. We have this option here in a knitting more campaign, which we'll do right now. So we'll call it our test, our master of media test. I like to name campaigns something really simple because otherwise I forget what they are later on. And here we go. It brings us into this new screen in Facebook. And this is where we do a lot of our work because it really shows us where the ads are, how we target people and, and, and what we have there. So we see we have our campaign name, our campaign details. So we pick our buying type. We're gonna be using auction today. Our objective is conversions. We can create an A-B test, though I don't particularly like the way that, a, that Facebook does that. Um, I prefer to run them a little bit more manually. And then there's an option down here um, on our campaign budget. And so Facebook does something really super cool called campaign budget optimization. And, and it's a tool, it's, it's something you can sort of play with. And what it does is allow you to say, for this ad campaign, so this master at media test, I want to spend $25 a day and I've got three ad sets and I want Facebook to figure out which is the smartest and spend the money there. Otherwise you're kind of manually bidding and playing. And so I'll, we'll go a little further in and explain what that means. But remember campaign budget optimization or CBO. Um, I love a good acronym and they're going to be using a couple of them. So let's come into next. And I have this opportunity here to create an ad set. And so the ad sets are really where we get into the meat of Facebook and Facebook ads, because the ad set is sort of like a governing, if the, if the campaign is the parent, the ad sets are sort of the sub parents underneath. And then you have the ads, which are the children. And so it, it's really a kind of stacking of information. Uh, I recommend that you have at least two ad sets because that's where you really define your audience for something. So we'll put this in as audience one. We have, we're gonna be looking to drive them to a website. We are giving a budget. Let's just for today say, we're gonna say it's a $15 daily budget, definitely not 150. We don't have that kind of those pockets here. Um, yeah, please. We're starting it. I can't, I can't, Catherine, I can't do 150. Thanks for reducing that to 15. That was great. <laughs> Most of us can't do $150 a day. Anyway, I never test at that kind of cost. It is far too expensive for testing. Okay. We like to be much, much lower More conservative, in our testing. More really conservative right? We'll say it's conservative. We'll say we like to be more conservative. Well, when we test offers, we never like to go out with as much money as humanly possible because that's just where we end up spending money. We like to really to really use smaller budgets, sometimes even $5 if we're testing creative um, a day, really just to start to see, is there some there there? Are people responding? Are they coming in? Or do we need to switch that up um, okay. and do a lot, of, a lot of testing? And that's a big part of what Facebook advertising is. It's, it's this willingness to test, shift, really see what people are responding to to get to your goals. Um, so we have our daily budget. And then we can create our audiences. And this is a really key part of Facebook advertising because it allows us to create audiences and look for people that we're going out to. You can see up here right now, technically the reach of this ad is for 240 billion people. And clearly that is not the size of my audience. I do not have 240 billion people that need to come in there. 
Um, I am looking at the United States. If let's say I'm looking, I really want to stay in this area. I might search. I live in New Jersey. I might search New Jersey as a state. I would put in New York where Maggie and many of my friends are. So let's put in New York and let's say Connecticut as well. Now for some people, you might have a virtual business or be looking at something that is a little bit more national and you would put in the entire country. But if we're really looking at local and you're doing local services, you really want to kind of target into a specific location and you can target by state. You can target down to the town level, the zip code level. There's a variety of different things you can do to really bring this, this audience down. You also can pick your age. I am probably not if I'm marketing my own company and looking for people who are 18. Usually they don't have small businesses. Sometimes they do, but probably not. So let's say I'm bringing my target age up to more like 28, maybe down from 65 and down somewhere around, come on Facebook, maybe let's say 58. I'm targeting all genders, though I know for many people, maybe you largely work with women, maybe you largely work with men. You might want to put that in there to really kind of target your audience down. I'm going to take off detailed targeting because I don't really need them to find more people. And here is where I can start to put an interest in what people like. So I would be, if I was looking at small businesses, I would say small business owners. I would see this drop down and I can pick various interests, various kinds of people. Uh, we'll put in small business owners for now. Let's say I was more specific in my ask because I always suggest that people get really specific. And let's say I, was, I wanted to do a lot of work with law firms, for example. So I might target law firms as an employer. Let's say I also wanted to do work with accountants. So I might target accountants or there we go. So I have, let's see, do we have job titles? That's an interest. I wouldn't necessarily want an interest because that's people who are looking for an accountant. I'm not looking for an accountant right now. I would want to pick people who are actually accountants or Maybe a CPA I would put in. There we go, certified public accountant. And so I would have all of these things and I would stack my interests. Now, if I had a really robust email list, I would pull that in. Or if I wanted to target all of the people that follow me on Instagram, I would be able to create an audience there or a lookalike audience, well, that gets a little more technical. And right now we'll just kind of focus on creating an ad in general. Uh, one of the questions I get asked a lot with this is, can you save that? Can you save the the um, the interests like this? You can. Whole... So what I like to do is here we have save this audience. So we click save and then I'm given this opportunity to, to name the audience. Um, Right now, they're just in the test account. So I might say small business test. And so this is everything that I have already created for this group of people, all this targeting, all these interests. Basically, it allows me to use them again for a different offer, a different kind of opportunity, different way that I wanted to go out to them. Um, and it allows me to keep them so I don't have to do this 100 times. Um, I like to do this a lot with warmer audiences um, and really create them in advance of starting an ad campaign. Um, and we really go in there and, and create audiences based on your Instagram or your Facebook followers, create some lookalikes, um, create audiences based on who's been to your website and really use a lot of that. And that's where, where the power of Facebook really comes in and we get a little more technical. Um, and that's kind of our, our pre-ad our pre -ad launch. Um, and we can go into that. Um, maybe we'll do that after this so that we don't get confused because we can really jump around a lot in Facebook because it's a really robust platform. Yes, and it's very easy to get confused. It's it, it's but you're making this look very, very easy. It's Catherine. very easy to get lost. 
yeah. in here. I spend a lot of time in here. So if I'm not lost, it's because I have been able to navigate to a lot of places. Um, right now, this might be set up as I like to pick automatic placements, especially for the beginning, just to really see who's there. This is set up into a traffic ad. So we will be optimizing for landing page views. I don't like to optimize just for link clicks because it doesn't mean that people go there. I want people who will really load on the page, though I have the opportunity to pick other things that I might want them to optimize for. Right now this is set up as a traffic campaign because my Facebook pixel is not associated with the, the test account, but we can take a look at that as well. Um, we click next because we have them in here. We don't want to use that client. We want to use me. So there we have my my Facebook page, Wellverse Marketing. We have my Instagram account, Wellverse Marketing as well. We'll call this new ad. Business interests, largely because I like to know who, what the ad is and, and what's sort of happening there. And so we go through, I add my media. So I've uploaded some images already. We'll take this picture of me. Um, I like to test different kind of creative pictures of me, pictures of um, more of a word, more words, pictures and words, um, different types of pictures, really, really to see what's hitting and what's what's bringing in the high quality of leads. So we put this in here. Catherine, I, I have a question for you. Okay. It, um, there used to be something that said your graphics, and I don't know if this applied to ads as well, but it couldn't have more than 20% text. Now, I know that's not the case in regular posts. Are there any limitations or any recommendations to or not to put in text or You know, logos? they still, they have taken that rule away in advertising. It was, very, it was a very, very specific rule for a long time that you couldn't have more than 20% text. Um, They've taken that away as, as the way that people are using the platforms have sort of shifted. They, Facebook and Instagram still caution not to use more than 20% text as, as it does, it doesn't seem to convert quite as well. Though you really wanna think about your ad and, and where it's starting to show up and, and really think about that in, in terms of how is it bringing people in and what is that experience? So right. you see, we can pop this out and kind of expand it. There's no text in here yet. So this is what this would look like in the Facebook feed. You can see that it's clearly coming from a company. It clearly says sponsored. Down here we have my the URL, the headline. There'd be some text up here. It would look like a post, but it would be a little more contextual. Um, but then you really want to think about something like stories. And so here would be my, here's how my ad would appear in Instagram stories. And there would be a little bit of text down here, but not really very much. And this, this could cause potentially some confusion for people. They might wonder why am I looking at this beautiful and amazing woman? Obviously I want to click on her, but perhaps they wouldn't. They would just say, who is this person that's showing up? Of is course it, they're going to clothing advertisement. It. Is gorgeous. it a business advertisement? What, why is this person showing up here? Right, right. And I, you know, I love the fact that you can look at the different view. Yes. Um, that, and, that and, gives me. and it really, really helps to really kind of understand where is something going and what is that experience going to be like for people? Hmm. Um, I never like to write text for ads within the platform itself because it's it's hard to kind of think in these screens and and figure out what you want to do. And so I like to personally write it in more of a Google Doc beforehand. So we'll look at this and take, um, we'll test some long form copy. I like to write copy in different lengths. So you usually have some long copy, some short copy. We'll just pick that up, copy and paste it, bring it right here. So this is our, what is called the primary text, which is, looks like what the actual post would be. And then we'll pick up the headline, which is find targeted leads through paid ads. We'll bring that in here, giving a little bit more context to these pictures, right? Understanding what is this ad for? What is, what's happening? Who is this person? Why are we doing this? 
me bring this into the website URL, which is where I'm directing the traffic to. For me, I want more people to contact me. I'm, I'm at this moment bringing it into my contact page, but depending on the company and what we were doing, we might have a sales page or a funnel page or something that gives a little more context to a certain area of the business that we were trying to advertise. If we were looking to do um, graphic design or if you're a business and say you're a lawyer and you have multiple areas in your practice, but you really want to drive traffic to one specific thing. So the ad is tailored to that. The copy is tailored to that. The page that we bring people to really speaks to that specific area of the practice and what it does. And so all of it is a very cohesive um, experience. You can see up here, I'm getting, I'm getting a warning because this test account is not associated with a pixel. And this brings up something we talked about last time, which is how important the Facebook pixel is. Um, the Facebook marketing pixel is for people who have been looking at digital marketing for a long time. It's, it's like a cookie. It's how they track people. It's how they track your data. It's how we really look at that. And, and it's hard to run certain types of campaigns without it. And, and really warming up that pixel and finding people is key to Facebook getting smarter and using the power of their AI for you. So if you go onto your website, certainly look at the back end, make sure that you have a Facebook pixel running. Um, it's pretty easy to set up and put on the site for, for WordPress, for Wix, for Square, um, for, I'm sorry, for Squarespace. All of them have pretty strong plugins and allow you to do that. And, and it's really, really important just to make sure that you're capturing as much information as you can about the people who are coming to your site um, and checking out your business. Um, next component, we have our display link. So this is just my web URL, www.wellburstmarketing. I have a call to action you can pick. They give you a lot of different choices. So if I was a movie or a show, I might say get show times, um, request time, see menu. Um, if I was doing e-commerce, I would say something like shop now or buy now. Um, but for now we can do learn more. That's perfectly fine. Um, and then I'm gonna let you in on a key piece of information, which is to build your URL parameter. This is a little more advanced, but it's extremely important because it allows you to see where your traffic is coming from. We have our campaign sources, our campaign medium. So we'd say Facebook, paid ads, paid ad, testing, which is our campaign today. And then I like to say, what is this content? So it's the pink jacket. We apply it and then essentially it adds an extra string of code down here to the URL and, and it allows us to really see that and, and find people later on and say this, this many hits, this many, this much traffic, these views on the website came from this specific ad and it helps us to measure that a little bit better. And then we would go on to publish it. I never run one ad. I always run at least two, preferably three to four because Facebook gets a little bit smarter. We would create another ad. Let's just duplicate it for now, just so that we can see how this shows up. And here we have another ad set, another ad, and so on and so forth. I like to put in two ad sets so they can kind of compete against each other and, and build, build traffic in that way. Um, and so that's generally how we build a Facebook ad. A lot of this is going to be come back down to your testing. So what's your creative? What's your headline? What's your audience? And, and constantly learning and constantly trying new things there to really see what, what is resonating with people. Um, one of my other favorite tools and capabilities within Facebook is to build out your audiences. And it, it's really key piece that people do um, up here we have our audience manager. 
it's a really key piece that people do because it allows you to kind of find people, save people, and and keep them engaged forever. So we'll build an audience quickly while we're while we're in here. Sometimes Facebook gets a little a little slow. Um, it has to do a lot of stuff. So you can see I've saved my small business audience. Um, let's say I'm creating another audience. So we'll take this from my Instagram account. My Instagram's pretty pretty solid right now. It's been doing pretty well. So, and then I create my criteria. So who's met the following criteria? This is the client account. Let's come down to me. So it might be anyone who's engaged with my account, anyone who's visited that profile, anyone who viewed an ad. So let's just say anyone who's engaged. I like to go more 60 days, usually 30, because people have a better chance of remembering me. It's been, we get out to 365 days, depending on how much content I've been publishing. We're, we're getting a little far for people to remember that they did something. I can include more people, exclude people. We'll name them Wellverse Marketing Instagram. And then I create the audience. I can also create a lookalike audience so I can find more people based on the people that are already in there to create more engagement. Um, this is something that we're seeing Facebook. These audiences, which used to go very far, have been going not quite as far recently as, as Facebook has been rolling out the new changes to iOS 14. If, if you're on an Apple phone, if you're on an iOS device, you might have, and you've upgraded recently, you might have seen a note that popped up that said, opt into tracking, um, or would you like to opt out of tracking? Many people have been opting out, which is making some of these audiences a little bit less powerful, but still powerful all the same. Um, so we're just, as an industry, really looking at, at what's happening in ads and, and making them as effective as humanly possible. So as with everything in technology, there's every time you think you have it down, there's a learning curve and a new thing thrown at you, and then you learn some more. Um, and these are really the components. And, and I like to test lots of different aspects. Um, and Maggie, I'm done kind of sharing some of this stuff. I like to test a lot of different aspects when I'm doing Facebook ads. I like to test long copy, short copy, pictures with words, pictures with no words. Sometimes I look at like really doing a pattern interrupt because as many of us know, you get on Facebook and people just kind of start mindlessly scrolling and liking and clicking and doing things. And so whether it's your organic social or your paid social, sometimes you just have to come up with a picture that's really colorful or really right. different or just kind of stops stops the scroll for a second and say, oh, let me let me look at this. Just and, and you know, and I love like the whole A-B testing, right? Like to try different things. It could be so silly. It could be a blue picture and a purple picture and one's gonna do better, you just don't know. And speaking of pictures, um, we have our friend, Jean Terman, love working with Catherine. She has so much knowledge and is so good at communicating exactly what you need to do so it makes sense and I can implement her suggestions immediately. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the thing, right? Somebody could teach you something, but if you can take it and implement it right away, that is a true gift. No, and many thanks to Jean. Jean took that wonderful photo of me in that pink blazer. <laughs> um, <laughs> to make people stop. It's a great photo. Um, I have a great time when I'm with her. So the images really, they really help. And it's the more interesting and the more clever and creative the images, it, it can really attract an eye because it's the same as your organic social. What makes people right. stop for a second? Exactly. And it, it is one of those things that people have to, you know, understand, like we, Jean had just recently done a Master at Monday on video where she was showing how simple it was to convert your photo to video, right? It's like, but you have to mix it up. If you're doing the same, even if you have something awesome, if it looks the same or it's right, you have to you know, mix it up a bit, right? Like what we, what you were saying with the, you know, looking at A-B testing, going through and doing the the different ads. I, I did have a question for you on the um, campaign budget optimization. Sure. Now, when you create these ad sets, you're, that, is that campaign always going to, it's going to look at the, the ad set that you have, or is it across, like what if you have multiple ads running? 
Sure. So let's pull, let's come back into here and go back into um, that ad yeah, account yeah. and we'll take a look at it. You're going to share your screen again? Yeah, I'll share my screen again. Okay. And oh, Jean, Jean, of course, is authentic. Stay authentic and interesting. That is so true, Jean. You nailed it. We certainly do want to be authentic. I, I you know, and, and that is, you know, the, the one thing I say if you're if you're going to take anything away from social media, take away the social, not the media. Right? <laughs> Maintain your social because it is it, it it that's how you're gaining clients. It, it's getting them to get to know you and and what have you. So, so let's say I have another ad in here. Now I can't see your screen yet, oh, uh, Catherine. That's okay because I'm doing something pretty boring. Oh, okay. We don't want to do uh -huh. that. We don't want boring. No, but um, and if something a little boring, just to kind of get some. Um. <laughs> if you have any questions, our our loyal listeners and and new friends, please make sure you put them in the chat. Catherine is going to be here. She is a marketing expert. So now is your time to get some very valuable, complimentary advice. I was told don't use the word free, but you know, <laughs> so complimentary. <laughs> Complimentary, yes, <laughs> complimentary training advice. So yeah. let me know when I'm back on and we can get to um, it. Yeah, but uh, have you shared the screen yet? Hold on a second. Oh, share. Jean is smiling at us. <laughs> now we had, um, uh, we, I've been seeing Jean's photos pop up quite a bit. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. We go. Here we go. Okay. So right now campaign budget optimization is set to off. And so you'll see we have this, this first ad set for audience one. It's got a $15 budget. And we have the second audience, the second ad set, also $15 budget. So for this campaign, this master media test, I'm gonna be spending $30 a day, $15 in each of these, these ad sets. So Ordinarily, I would be targeting different people. One ad set might be my interests, so my small business people, and my other ad set might be my client list and my followers on social media and the lookalikes. And so I would really break it up. And the reason I do that is to see who is, who's engaging more, who's, who's following more, who's engaging more, what is the better audience, what's, what's a little warmer, who's more receptive, maybe different audiences are responding to different things. And it it really just allows us to look at that data in, in a clearer way. When you put too many things together, it starts to get a little muddier and harder to know what happened and why. Yeah. Um, so if I come back up here and let's say I'm going to turn this into more of a, a CBO. So I turn this back to on. And then I'm going to look at this at the campaign level, not at the ad set level. So I'm setting this. You can see it already brought it up to $30. So did the math for me. Um, I can change my bid strategy if I were so inclined from lowest cost into something more like cost cap or bid cap, but you need a lot of, I recommend doing that when you have a lot of data on exactly how much you want to spend for each person. Um, when you're just starting out, I think lowest cost is usually a pretty safe place to, to be. And what you'll notice when, then when we go into these audiences where previously we had seen that line for budget and how much do you want to spend? We just have the date because the budget is being spent at a different place now. It's not on the specific audience. Facebook will use the money, figure out which ad set is doing better and put more money there. So I recommend testing both things and looking at all of these things when you're doing campaigns because Facebook is so much about testing and they've really given you a lot of different options and ways to play with things and, and understand what's working for you. Um, you know, there's Facebook gurus and people who will say only do it this way, only do it that way. Um, the reality is that everything is a test. Everything needs to be learned. And what's working for one person might not be working for another person. And what worked for you six months ago may not work for you now. Exactly. I, you know, um, same exact ad could have done fabulously six months ago. And then today, could have done fabulously and might not be doing as well right now. One audience might have been doing fabulously and suddenly it's not doing as well. As well. So you, we, you always uh, need to be looking and testing. Yeah, we actually have a question for you from our friend, Jean. How important is that first line, the caption? What is Facebook doing with that, if anything? So I would say your first line in your caption is, is really crucial because 
when you are writing that out, it's it's frequently the first thing that people see. And so you want to think about that first 100 characters, I would say, 100, 100 to 50 characters, almost like a, a tweet. And, and think of it out as a hook because they don't show the full ad, especially if it's a long format. You're going to want people to click in to see more, to get more information. And and I like to really think about ad copy in, in a couple different ways. And one of my favorite is what is the solution and what is the problem and using your headline as the solution so what is this ad what is this business going to do if i come here what is it solving for me how is how is this fixing something and the ad really defines the problem what is the problem what has happened what do i need to get in my life and then what is the solution and how did this this company solve that for me um and when you think about that your ad copy becomes um a puzzle to some extent. right you know, it was interesting. I was just reading um, a book called, uh, I think it's Brand Story, mm-hmm. um, or Story is a Brand. I can't remember. I just started reading it, but we're they were talking about villains. And I love when they talk, like, it's like the villain, the good guy, right? When you're building the story, right? Like, what would Luke Skywalker be without Darth Vader, right? This whole, you know, concept of looking at what, you know, what I, I say, well, in my business, what's the villain? Well, it's the same thing as the solution. It's social media. <laughs> the villain is the same as the solution, unfortunately. Okay. But I, it, you know, right. How do you develop that um, connection with the people who are looking for you? And it's, of course, sympathizing with whatever struggle they are faced with the problem, as you stated, right? Yeah, really, really thinking about what, what people's pain points are, I'm really trying to get super specific with their pain points because people have different different pain points what's going to motivate someone who is maybe a mom of an eight-year-old looking for a dance studio is going to be considerably different than someone who has moved to the area and maybe has a 15 year old competitive dancer these are you're going to be looking at different audiences different things will resonate with them also again in your targeting Someone who has no children might not be as interested in ads for a dance studio that caters to little kids. You want to make sure that you're hitting people who are parents, people who have daughters maybe, and and you can really get into a lot of that demographic data within Facebook. Um, and, really, and that's where really your your wording comes in. The different, like it's all it's it's really quite it can you know. But start the thing is to start right. It's just take the step. Exactly. If it's not create. And, you know, well, would you suggest creating two ads just to kind of get that? I always suggest first? I always suggest creating two ads. You really want to have two, if not three, probably, probably three, okay. um, because it allows Facebook to play off each other and, and learn more. You really want to look at um, keeping your audiences to over a million. You don't want to go out for 40 million, but you also don't want to go out for only 20,000. You want to try and stay in about a million um, to 2 million people, unless you're doing something super hyper local. So okay. a restaurant perhaps well, or a gym. I'm actually glad you brought that up on the super hyper local, right? Cause you're talking about like a restaurant that maybe caters to people, you know, 20 to 30 mile radius. But what about those businesses that are also looking for people traveling? Like, you can right. do, and that is another area in your targeting. You can really look in, say, people who are have been are coming to this area, people who have been looking at websites in this area for things in this area, and make sure that you're serving them as. It's, you see a lot of tourism companies that do these sorts of things. Um, yeah. Certainly, if you're in a, more of a vacation destination, people are doing that, or or really trying to make sure that they're serving ads for people who are in that zip code at that moment. Um, mm because that becomes crucially important. So who is in this, who's in my five mile radius, my 10 mile radius at this moment, making sure that shows up there. And so the fun of the ads sort of become when you can start slicing and dicing and parsing all of these different needs. It's, it's why I and, and most good Facebook marketers that you're going to encounter are really gonna try and ask a lot of questions. Who is this person? Where are they? What is happening with them? What's going on? What do they want at this moment? Why would they pick you? Um, to really, to really build that out. Um, and I'm, I, I, we have another question. Jean is asking the same question I had, uh, but she said it better. 
<laughs> it's a low bar to entry, but what should people be looking at for click rates? I feel like we want 100%, but what is acceptable? What is common? So if you are getting a 2% click rate, then you are doing great um, in Facebook advertising and in advertising. Most people will will see your ad, they will potentially click. Most people will probably skip, like, skim by. And so that's where your budgeting really comes into, into play and, and what your business goals are. You can certainly run ads for $5 a day and, and test some media and really test, but once you really wanna scale or you wanna do more, you wanna be really looking at that budget and saying, how many people do I need to get in front of to reach my business goals and, and really start to back into some of those numbers and, and really look at that, that calculator. Um, because it, it does it does matter um, with small small click through rates you need a lot more people to get to make a small number really meaningful um, and that that becomes a big a big piece of what what I do with clients and really say how how do we want to get there does this seem reasonable you want to grow to this is this amount of money really going to get us there um, because the challenge so you just like if you're advertising if your budget is smaller. Do you suggest fine tuning your demographic then? Re yeah, I suggest really fine tuning your demographic, really fine tuning your offer, um, and just being really realistic about what you're hoping that that's gonna gonna give you. If you if you were trying to make thirty thousand dollars in sales a month, five dollars from your ads is, is not five dollars a day is not going to get you there. Like it's it's simply yeah. not. Who wouldn't want to spend three hundred dollars in advertising to get thirty thousand dollars? That that there's no magic bullet in there. There isn't, and and I think it's good, you know, that we look at these as, um, you know, two percent success rate, not ninety eight percent failure rate. <laughs> Exactly. Right? Which is genes here very astutely. You know, this is our, our our challenge with social media. Some people feel like it's the engagement. I We also talk about how, you know, some people can have 10,000 followers, but if they're not engaging, what is your engagement rate? If they're not engaging with you, who cares if you have 10,000 followers, right? right? I'd rather have a thousand followers that absolutely love me. There was a, a musical um, and they had a song that said, I'd, I'd like to be nine people's favorite thing than a hundred people's ninth favorite thing. Yeah. It was a hundred, hundred to thousand, something like that. Right. Which is, which is great. Right. Cause that's what you want. You want those loyal fans, those raving fans, the people who are going to be, um, ideal clients for you to, to find you. That's, I think, uh, where we're running into a little bit of a challenge, you know, now with what's going on with the, um, with that, that <laughs> with the uptake, yeah, you know, <laughs> because you're losing, you're going to be losing potential. Because who wants well, to be? Of course, you're going to. Who wants an ad, right? But then I mean, again, yeah, who wants an ad? And the thing to really remember, I find with with advertising is really coming back to this sort of old. I don't want to say madman, but this kind of older mentality in your advertising, which is before there was digital advertising, you didn't know. It, you had a lot of ways to know if an ad was working. And really it was, is it working if the business is doing better? Is the business doing better as a whole when you're advertising or worse? Because that's that's really the question because sometimes people aren't clicking through on the ad, but you're just getting in front of the right people. And so now, they, now they've seen you, they saw your ad, maybe they saw your organic social and they checked out your business just to be like, who is this person? What are they about? Maybe they went to your website, but maybe they didn't click through the ad. Maybe they just found you and maybe they kept seeing it and they liked it. It's, it's really, the idea is to help get further, is to get in front of people you might not ordinarily get in front of and to get a little bit further and then bring in everything else that you're doing that's making your company who it is so they get to know you. The ad is just kind of helping to open the door. The door. And, you know, it, 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 that's are people going to buy immediately from your ad? Probably not. No, they never heard of you. I wish they would. It depends on what you're selling. You know, do you find things like um, free trial or free something or a tend to do well free with something? Free trials tend to do well. Um, 
I, I'm, a, I'm a big lover of things like lead magnets, which is the content that you can give to people for free. But again, when you're doing something like that, you really want to think about what is that content? Is it valuable? What am I giving to people? Why would they want it? If I'm asking for their email address, why are they engaging? But it's a great way to help build up your email list, to build your audience um, for local, right. to bring more people into your business. You know, a big part of when I when I like to do Facebook ads for people, I like to look at your budget and your strategic goals and say, let's get into this know, like, and trust factor. And how is each ad and each campaign bring us in to accomplish one of those goals? Is this ad helping someone to know you, to like you, and to trust you? So do we hit them at each point in this buying decision to engage them further and make them more likely to take out their wallet for you? No, I love that, Catherine. And it does, it, it, you know, those are both two things that I've used before and they've worked well. So um, I appreciate so much all of your insight. It's amazing. We have, um, oh, for, okay. Um, we do have, Jean has said here, you are in front of them. Who cares if they like the ad? You care if they end up buying from you. <laughs> <laughs> But it is true, right? Like you, you want them to, you know, what is going to make them hit that button, right? And that's right. the same it's, thing. You're and to some extent, sometimes you can run things that are just to get likes because then you just look for those people again. And you're like, well, you yeah. liked me one time. Maybe you're going to like me again. And, you know, and really engaging in multiple ways. You know, there's there's that trick with a with a, a Facebook like on your page that you can always invite somebody to like your page when they like it. Can you do that with a Facebook ad when they like a Facebook ad? When they, somebody likes a Facebook ad, there's, there's more rules on that level of privacy and what you can do, but what you can do is you can start to create audiences and, and target people who have maybe watched your video or liked your ad. Um, people who had watched three seconds of your video, watched your whole video. Um, people who liked your ad or would comment on your ad, you can create audiences there, people who, who clicked on your ad. And, and those are generally gonna be people who are, who are semi-warm because they, they saw you, they engaged, they took an action. Okay. Um, and you can put them into remarketing. Essentially, as, as we all know, we've all had the experience of, of looking at something online and then going on Facebook or Instagram and immediately seeing an advertisement for it. It's because we visited their website and they they targeted us because they they knew we were interested in them in some way, shape, or form. Does it ever remind you of nineteen? Was it 1984? Big Brother's watching you like that? Yes, you know, that yes, whole, of course. Like I, I mean, mean, this is this is this is what, this is what that is. And, and there have been times <laughs> where, as a marketer, you could target probably too much, and it was amazing if you were someone trying to sell something. Now we can target a little bit less and a little bit less as some of those things change. But that doesn't mean that things are less effective and they don't work. It just means that we need to get smarter in our marketing and how we're writing and what we're using to hook them and, and, and really what we're offering to people. People have a, I think as people get savvier and their, their consumption gets savvier, people are more discerning customers, which is ultimately great for everyone to be a more discerning customer. But it means we as business owners need to up our game always. Right. And, you know, and it's you can never be in one place. I mean, as a marketing expert, right, like you do Facebook ads, you do Google ads. I mean, but it, you also encourage people like we met in a networking group. You know, we met Jean through a networking group. Like you can't just market yourself in one thing because and I, I say this all the time, like what happens if Facebook goes away? What happens if Google goes away? What happens? You know, is it going to happen? Probably not, but, but not it, not likely. But it, what? It, and and the other thing is, if I have if I do that lead magnet that you were saying, where I'm I'm doing an ad and I'm collecting that email address. Yes, their email address can change, but if I put the ad on Facebook, I'm not getting their email address, right? That's right, and that's why kind of lead magnets and and building people's email lists is. This is a marketer, one of my favorite things to do, because once you can kind of own that that relationship and you have a piece of it, they you've essentially extended an invitation and they've accepted it to you. Um, they're trusting you with that for some reason. And because you have offered them something of such great value that they want it from you, 
and they've given you their email address and now you have created a relationship with them that you own. You can take that relationship into more places and continue to engage with them in a way that you cannot with social media, um, either paid or organic. And so what, one of my favorite things to do is, is to use those levers to help businesses build something that will last for longer and has really high value. Right. Because you're talking about, you know, everything working in unison, right? Because you have your website, which you need, you have your social media that you need, you have your ad strategy, you have your mail campaign, your list, like everything is, has to, you know, like I use my Facebook to promote my social media. I use my social media to promote my Facebook, right? Like I use my email list to promote both. To and promote, I go to back, promote, right? To promote both. It, it all, um, you know, it all works together in, in this lovely dance that we call marketing. <laughs> so um, I do, I do want to ask you, do you have any last words of wisdom to mention to our, our listeners today? My last words of wisdom are to just be, be trying and be experimenting and know that if it's not happening immediately. It doesn't mean that it's bad or anything's wrong. You just need to keep experimenting and keep trying and, and really look at where, look at each stage of the process, look at each stage of what you're doing and, and figure out where, where there might be a disconnect. It's, it's really about following your data. And the, the best thing about Facebook ads is that there's just a lot of data there that you can look at in ways that sometimes you can't. That's why people that's why digital marketers hate print ads because you can never tell anything that's happening after you do a print ad. You I always no say, unless you put a coupon in it and they bring the coupon in. And it's, even then you still don't know because they get the coupon and you, what are you writing on it? Oh, male mid fifties, you know, no, you're not, you know, right. what does he like? Well, he was wearing a fishing hat. Maybe he likes fishing. You don't, you're not going to get all this. Yeah, yeah, there's no information. Um, <laughs> who was handed a coupon? Who, I mean, it's like the, RIP Lord and Taylor coupons. You could get them from anyone. Yes. Um, yeah. I love a good Lord and Taylor coupon, but if anyone could get them and they honored them all the time. Yeah. Um, perhaps not a great business. <laughs> um, well, and, and so, but I, that, those are my biggest takeaways is, is to use these areas and use these activities to bring in more engagement, bring in more audience and, and really make that happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and don't be afraid, like, try it. What do you have to lose? And if you really are stuck, contact Catherine. You have her, sorry, <clears throat> my, of course, my voice goes right in the middle of your name, um, at wellversemarketing.com. She is amazing. Um, tell her that you saw her here. We love when people contact our guest speakers and let them know, um, you know, that they enjoyed the presentation. If you liked this video today, please consider sharing it. Drop that like and go down in to YouTube and share, um, uh, you know, put, put the subscribe, click the bell, put the subscribe in so that you can be notified the next time that we drop a video. Um, as I mentioned, Master It Media is here to help you take the commotion out of your promotion. What we do is connect you with ways to market your business, but I do management of social media. Catherine does the paid advertising and the marketing. So you have a power team right here in your own backyard. Make sure you reach out to us. If you want to get a little bit of help in handling your own social media, make sure you sign up for Teleprompter. This is a new service that Master It Media is offering. It contains some amazing tips on how to help you timely tips to how to help you with your social media. Every Wednesday, a newsletter goes out and you get informed about what's coming up next week. You know, all those fun holidays we have coming up, Catherine, it's a lot of fun. We do all these little hashtags and, and tips and all this great contact tent that you can uh, find very easily without having to go over and search. Um, we're here every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern. We are doing things that provide you with tips to help you promote your business. We have industry experts like Catherine who come in and Jean who was popping in as a visitor today. So if you have any interest in anything like Facebook, Instagram, Google My Business, LinkedIn, Twitter, social media strategies, business tips, apps, tools, and more, 
this is a place to stop by every Monday or watch our videos on Facebook where we keep them on uh, Facebook and on um, and on uh, fa Facebook and YouTube. My goodness, my uh, that was a lot of words. Uh, Jean is signing off to my favorite woman, making marketing make sense. Thank you so much for this information. You are both motivational and inspiring. Oh my goodness, that is mm -hmm. lovely. So Jean, you can be my marketing person. Now I'm gonna take that and use that in the quote. There you go. Uh, just, and there's a tip guys. Hey, you know, you get amazing um, words like that. That's somebody else speaking for you. Make sure you use that in a social media post. You ever, <laughs> you know, you never know, right? It helps, it helps you grow your business. We're all for it. So Catherine, thank you again for joining us. Everybody make sure that you visit Catherine's website at wellversemarketing.com. And of course, pop over to Master It Media, where we're here to take the commotion out of your promotion. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, hold on just one second. Here we go.